Hi ladies. This week we are so excited to have Bridie Spicer on the couch with us. Bridie shares so openly and honestly about bringing the Holy Spirit into your home and just the power of actually doing that and what that looks like. And I really think you're going to be encouraged by how she shares so openly and honestly and practically. So I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy this great conversation that we're having today. Hey, it's so great to have you here today, Bridie. So good to be here. I must warn you, I did eat garlic before I came, but we're 1.5 metres apart, so I think you should be all right. All right. <laughs> well, I didn't have garlic, but who knows? Who knows what could happen? So today it's about hearing what you've got to say, you know, real stories. This is something we're really excited about with Unveiled. We just want to get to know people. I don't know about you, but I've just missed catching up with friends and totally. you know I know you and I've had some great conversations over the phone and um, which has been a real blessing but you know just sitting and talking and I'm yeah. sure there's women at home that are feeling exactly the same way just yeah missing out on this sort of stuff so let's start by you just telling us a little bit about yourself maybe three things that you'd like to share okay three things about myself one probably is almost two years ago now my family and I moved down to Torquay so I'm married, obviously, um, and I've got a four-year-old little girl, two-year-old little boy. Mm -hmm. So we made the sea change after a 10-year battle between my husband and I. <laughs> and it's going great, I must admit. It's a good place to live. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and then the second would probably be... That no, that was your three, so you're done now. Oh, no. okay, done. <laughs> um, the second would be I was on staff at a church in Melbourne for mm -hmm. 10 years. Um, so it was formerly Richmond AOG. When I was there, it was Bridge Church. It's now Numa Church, mm -hmm. so kind of confusing, but people may or may not know of it. Um, and never, ever thought that was something I would do, but absolutely loved it. Nothing else I would rather do in the world other than being a mum now. Um, and the third thing, I was trying to think of the most random thing about myself. And I was going to say I'm a bionic woman because I've got a pacemaker, but that's not that interesting. Mm. Then I was going to say that I eat cereal every night before I go to bed and I've pretty much done it for my whole life. But I think the most obscure random thing is I think I have the longest arm hairs. Wow. I could win a Guinness <gasps> World Record. Look at that. Oh, my god. That goodness. is still the hair. So my brothers told me my whole life how disgusting it was. And um, I was really embarrassed about it in high school, but I now I'm quite proud. I think I could get a perm or braid them or who knows what the future holds. Could be a new fashion. I don't think I will ever <laughs> look at your arms. <laughs> I think I'm going to regret showing everyone that. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> next time we catch up, I'm just going to be staring at your arm hairs, thinking about braiding them. Yeah, I'm going to have women come up to me in church, I'm sure, and just look straight at my arms before my face. But wow, you know, we've done it now. We've gone there. So there's no Good going back. you. Yeah. Like, we're we're talking about real stories and that is like diving right in there yes. being vulnerable and yep. real yep. all at once that's amazing i'm already regretting it well in our house sometimes we're allowed to have cereal for dinner and the girls think it's a real treat so i'm not going to tell them that you actually do that every night i have dinner first and then i, I have it after dinner before bed and what cereal what's your Look at the moment, it's these rice puffs. They're actually mm. really healthy. I bought them for the kids. Brown but rice I've, puffs? Yes, but yep. I've started eating them. They're quite enjoyable. Cover them in sugar, honey? No, I actually don't. Just straight up. Good on you. A lot of milk. Wow. Yeah. You must have strong bones, <laughs> all that calcium. Maybe that's connected to your arm hairs. Well, it's meant to be an interesting fact. I'm sure this is not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Hey? A few people will be having a bit of a laugh. Sure. So I would love to know, how are you going? You know, I think when we say to people, how are you going? It's natural for us just to straight away go good. Or I even know sometimes I go for a walk around the river and I'll say to someone as I walk past them, how are you? I'm like, they're never going to answer how they're going because we're walking straight past each yeah. other. But I'd love to know, you know, how are you going at the moment? I'm actually doing really well. Um, I think one we're really lucky and I don't take it for granted not too much has changed for us so my husband's still working and I'm home with the kids normally anyway so um yeah so that's the same for me we live in a really beautiful part of the world um mm. where there's a lot of yeah outdoors around us and stuff so yeah we're doing really well I think um from hard events in the past I've learnt 
the benefit of focusing on what I'm really grateful for and, um, and what I'm really thankful for and how much that actually feeds into my life and, um, yeah, and into my overall state of mind and that kind of thing. Um, and remembering the greatness of God and who mm. he is. Um, but I think the other thing probably, you know, obviously I'm so aware of what so many people are going through and so many people are in really heartbreaking situations. But at the same time, I really wanted to have God's perspective of this season. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Isaiah 55, I love it in the New Living Translation, so I'll just read it to you. It says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says mm. the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Mm, and so I guess I wanted to look at this season not through my own eyes or my own perspective or my own thoughts because that's not God's way. Like yeah. the way I see this is not the way heaven sees it. Mm. And so I've been really prayerful in, okay, well, God, how do you see this season? How do you see this situation? Um, and I guess through that, I've actually have um, a real excitement in my spirit, like mm. about what God actually wants to do through this time. I don't think God caused this time. Mm. I think he ha his heart breaks for what some people are going through, yeah, but absolutely. I think absolutely he can use this time. Yeah. And so I'm just so excited. I've been studying the book of Acts and I feel like there's so many, so many similarities in the way God's scattering the church amongst his community mm. and, um, and the way he can use that for the gospel to spread during this time. And I just think there's an openness in people who are searching for hope. They're searching for real answers. Um, like, you know, it's quite unprecedented. Absolutely. We say that word so overused at the moment, but I think the openness in people's hearts is equally as unprecedented. And we've all got something in common at the yeah. moment. Yeah. You know, there's so many opportunities for conversation and for reaching out and helping people because yeah. people are going through so much. So I'm actually really excited about what God wants to do in this time through his church, which mm. are the people. It's not the building, but it's the people. Yeah. Um, but anyway, don't get me going on that because I'll well, be talking forever. <laughs> no, it's interesting you say that because we were talking on the phone just the other day mm. and I noticed in Acts that for the, at the end of Acts, Paul was under house arrest yeah. for two years and I couldn't help but feel connected to that, even thinking, oh, hang on a second, it's kind of like we're under house yeah. arrest. And, yeah. you know, in that time... Paul was still preaching the word yeah. of God and the church was growing. And that was a real encouragement to me because yeah. I, I looked and I thought, hey, hang on a second. This, this, yes, it mightn't have been COVID, but this sort of stuff has happened to yeah. people and God has just used it in such a mighty way. Absolutely. So, the gospel spread in Acts because of persecution. Yeah. Because of circumstances outside the believer's control mm. that caused them to go amongst their communities and share the gospel. Mm. We've like, got something to that's learn. That's now. Right? That's 2020. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Bridie, when I first spoke to you and, and just shared with you a little bit about what we were wanting to do with Unveiled, um, you it was so encouraging hearing what God has been doing in your life. And that's part of why I wanted you to be able to share uh, with other women as well. So you mentioned to me that throughout this year, in particular as a mother, that you have recognised that you really need to invite the Holy Spirit into your home and mm. um, actively doing that. Would you just share with us a little bit about what that exactly looks like for you um, in this season? Yeah, sure. I think, um, you know, the Bible tells us that we're to take dominion over all the earth. And so if that's the case, then we're 100% meant to take dominion over our homes. Mm. And I think, you know, during this season, we're spending more time in our homes than ever before. Absolutely. Thank you, Daniel Andrews. God bless you. <laughs> Um, so I've just been really aware of the fact that if I don't take that dominion over my home, if I don't spiritually lead the atmosphere of my home, and when I say I, my husband and I, mm. then something else will. Yeah. The media will, society will, um, people's opinions will, and there's such a constant feed of negativity in this time. And yeah, so, absolutely. Um, taking ownership for what's the spiritual atmosphere of our home going to look like in this time. And I would be lying if I didn't say that it has been a challenge at times with my two young, amazing kids who I adore. But I say to my husband, nothing has the ability to make me feel more exacerbated and within the period of 20 seconds to feel more like exuding love. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's ridiculous how I can swing the pendulum and my kids. Um, and so during COVID, um, I had a two-year-old that was getting nappy, uh, toilet trained. And so we had poo trampled into the carpet. Mm, um, yes. I had cups of water couriered out that I then realized were coming from the toilet. Oh, that's, um, that's great. I mean, you know, we've had the usual sibling punch-ons yeah. and, um, and all the rest of it, just all the normal stuff. But I would be lying if I didn't say there was points which I was just like, oh my God, what the heck? going a little bit crazy and I think you even use the word you know failing as a yeah, mum at times and, totally there mm. was times where I got to the end of the day and I'm like I really feel like I failed today like mm. I failed as a mum I've yelled at the kids like I'm actually not proud of the mum that I've been today mm. and that's hard when like your kids are your greatest passion and you know they're the greatest gift given to you mm. and you're like I failed I've got it wrong today yeah and so I would love to say that coming back to what you said about um, the Holy Spirit, I would love to say that I involved and invited the Holy Spirit into my parenting just because I invite the Holy Spirit into everything I do. But it was actually out of mere desperation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was that sense of I'm getting it wrong and yeah. I don't know how to get it right. That's and, good though. And, you know, I want to parent like my Heavenly Father parents me. Mm, mm. Like, yeah, he sets, um, you know, expectations and boundaries mm. and there's consequences to stuff. But when I fail in that, it's never ascending me away. It's never yeah. shaming me. It's never responding in anger. It's always coming and going, okay, well, like what's going on on the inside here? Let's address the heart issue. Yeah, that's good. And then always calling me higher. Like, mm. okay, well, that's not what's in you. That's not what's on your life. Mm. And so that's... That's my benchmark for how I want to parent my kids is knowing how God leads and parents me yeah, and how he beautiful. deals with me. And so that's the approach that I guess I'm trying to take. But like I said, I get it wrong and I fail. And so I just realized how necessary it was that I actually can't do this on my own. Mm. Like what I'm wanting to do, I'm not just wanting to bring kids up till they get 18 I'm actually wanting to like raise men and women of God yeah. who are walking in all God has called them to and put on their life and so I can't keep my cool on my own <laughs> <laughs> when I'm really frustrated but I also can't like raise them to be all that they're called to be on my own either because mm. that requires the Holy Spirit imparting and you know the Holy, I just have, yeah, such an understanding that the Holy Spirit knows my kids. Yeah, absolutely. He knows my husband even better than I do. He knows mm. everything that's on their life and, and, and for their future. And so I need him to guide and to lead my parenting. Like mm. I don't want to be leading that. I want, I want to be leading my kids as he's leading me. And um, I just love, um, you know, John 16, 7, it says, it is best for you, and it's obviously Jesus talking and he's speaking to his disciples yeah. and he's saying, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Mm. And I just love that because I imagine being one of the disciples and I'd be, but what on yeah. earth could be better than like yeah. you being with us, like we're walking with you, you're praying for us, we're seeing you do all these amazing miracles, people are coming to know God. Mm. But like Jesus actually says that it is better that we have the Holy Spirit than mm. that I have him sitting next to me on this couch. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. And I think sometimes we can, or I don't know, I'll personalise it because I know I can, and in the past have maybe downplayed the role of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know, you're like, absolutely. oh, the Father, the Son, then the Holy Spirit or the other way around. Or, But really, it's three equal parts. Mm. And mm. the Holy Spirit is not this random spirit floating around out there doing weird stuff. Like mm. the Holy Spirit is actually a person. Yeah. It's the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so I'm just so aware of how much... Um, he wants to help me in everything that I do Absolutely. and guide and lead and be a part of everything I do. And I think this is applicable not just for people who are trying to parent through this season, but mm. for all of us, for people who are maybe having major struggles with their business, um, with their partner, 
Yeah. We all know that my husband's not the problem in our, our household, it's me. <laughs> but, you know, there can be real pressures during this yeah. time. A lot of people yeah. are finding in marriages and, um, and just in people's mental health and stuff. And inviting the Holy Spirit into those situations each and every day mm. just makes the biggest difference. Like, I don't know, I just started getting up and surrendering the day to the Holy Spirit and saying, okay, will you lead me, you show me. Or even when the kids, like, do something and I've told them a hundred times and I'm just going nuts. I'm like, all right, go and have time out. Think about it. And it's really time out for me. Yeah. So I can go away and go, okay, Holy Spirit, like mm. fruits of the spirit, show me how to lead this one. Give me your patience, guidance. Mm. And you know, the more of the Holy Spirit that we have in our lives, the more the fruits of the spirit Absolutely. are available to flow through our lives. And I don't know about other people, but when I'm in the house a lot, I need the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, mm. self-control. Like I've needed a lot of self-control. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Mm. I heard someone say that with, um, with kids, the days are long, but the years are short. Mm. And heck, have some of the days felt long during COVID. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's so true. So true. But, you know, I, yeah, I can't always be in control of what happens, but I can be in control of how I respond, whether yeah. I respond out of my flesh mm. or whether I respond out of the Holy Spirit and Him in me. And, you know, I guess one of the aspects of that that I've realised, um, my daughter is she's my uh, my son we call hurricane harry because he's just like his name's harrison he's just so full of energy and i blame my husband for that so i'm like all right well you created this energy that's all you so you go outside with him and burn it off and then every time my daughter gives sass because she's got quite a lot of strong personality my husband blames me for that that's good that's so, fair one each <laughs> totally so she turned around to me a little while back and i asked her to do something Oh, no, and then I was like, oh, can you just come here? She's like, oh, mate, would you just relax? And I was like, oh, my goodness, that was me. That was, that was a mirror of me speaking. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was quite funny at the time. But equally, um, even when it's not funny, what's in me and what's in my heart I think when you look in the mirror, you see the dirt on your face. And mm. I think when you look at your kids, you see the dirt that's on your heart. Mm, that's good. So you see so much of yourself reflected back in just the things they do, the things they say, how they say it, the looks on their face. And so I'm just so aware of wanting to have a clean heart. And I think that's one of the things the Holy Spirit does, you know, convicts us and and sometimes at the end of the day, I've literally had to go and repent and I've mm. had to be like, Holy Spirit, like I have failed today. I've got it wrong today. I haven't stewarded the gift that you've given me the way I should have today. And, you know, just wanting to keep that clean heart. And I've had to um, apologize to my husband because I've like rung him in a grumpy mood and blamed stuff on him and then been like, um, sorry, babe. Yeah, I'm just it was me. It was all me. It wasn't actually about you. <laughs> Just forget. Erase all that bit. <laughs> With my kids, though, I've had to apologise to my kids because yeah. I want them to learn from my example. Yeah, so absolutely. I, don't, I want to be humble enough to tell them when I've got it wrong. Mm. I've apologised plenty of times as well. I think it's so important, you know, just yeah. I'm sorry that mummy spoke to you like that. Yeah, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, Proverbs 4, 23, well, most of us would know, but it says, says above all else, guard your heart for everything flows from it. Mm. And so I'm so aware in parenting that, um, that what is in my heart is actually going to flow out into my kids. And it's the same with our work environment. It's the same with housemates. It's the same with when we go into our unis. Like, you know, the people that we're around, what we have in our heart, everything is going to flow through that filter to mm. those people. And so the Bible talks about continually being filled by the Holy Spirit. But as the Holy Spirit fills me, what filter in my heart is it going through? Is it getting like filtered through the muck and the dirt of, you know, unforgiveness or yeah. even just in this um, season, anxiety mm. and worry or, um, you know, low self-esteem or just there's so many different things that we can hold in our hearts that then what's flowing through us 
you know, I, I picture like a water pipe and more clean water flowing in and it flows out dirty onto my kids yeah. or onto the environment that I'm in. And so I guess the stakes just go up when you realise the impact that your heart has on those around you. It's a great way to look at it. And so I want to be someone who just has a clean heart, like who constantly says to the Holy Spirit, search me, like Mm. speak into this. But I also invite my husband to speak into it. Like, okay, well, what do you see on my life that's blind spots that I need to change? You know, recently I asked people that I've worked with in the past, you know, what is there blind spots that I would have in my leadership that could impact the way God wants to use me in the future? And so, yeah, allowing God, but allowing other people to speak into some of those areas so that what does flow into me through the Holy Spirit flows out again the way it was intended to be and without my stuff, you know, mucking it up. And um, got to choose your days, though, that you ask your husband for those feedback. Like maybe the day that Harrison's yeah. got poo through the house, that's yeah. a no feedback day. Yeah. Don't go there. Come <laughs> home. Just love me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Um, you made a comment too that that really just struck me then about you know seeing the dirt on our face Mm. and it just made me think of the fact that when we look in the mirror I I don't know about you but I want to see Jesus you know that's what I want to see I want to see that my life is reflecting him and I think that's even part of the scripture that unveiled comes Mm. comes from it's just that idea of being transformed by what he is doing in our lives and and I think even for me just this conversation to take away from that you know what am I seeing Mm -hmm. when I look in the mirror because I want to see Christ yeah I don't want to and, and I know that in Christ I am washed clean white as snow so you know to be able to focus on that I think is is a great thing to take away and to ask the uh, to ask the Holy Spirit that question Mm. you know what am I seeing what am I looking at but it's really powerful you know what you're sharing and I'd love to know though you've spoken about failing and um, I'd love to know when you fail can you give us a really practical example of what you do so what do you do when you feel like you've failed you know by the end of that day or the morning, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things, but is there a practice that you have that helps, you know, start the next day again? Yeah, well, I guess some of the things, like I said, um, you know, just inviting the Holy Spirit into it, um, repenting to God, to my kids. Um, but I guess practices in my life, you know, I this week was on a webinar trying to develop my parenting, like practically, but then in terms of the Holy Spirit, like in the mornings, waking up and first thing, inviting him into my life again and to, to have his way in my life to to have his way in our household in mm. our day um putting worship music on like yeah. I find that it just totally resets the whole atmosphere of our home sometimes and the kids are just so drawn to it and um you know I obviously as a mum you don't have a whole lot of spare un, un, uninterrupted time but putting podcasts on while yeah. I'm like getting yeah, dinner great. ready or sometimes the kids are you know wanting to watch tv so I'll put like a Christian program on for them to watch or Um, So, yeah, I think there's just, you know, so many different ways that we can just keep injecting like Mm. parts of God and his spirit into our homes, because I know that what's in our family, the overflow of that impacts people that come into our home. Yeah, and, you know, definitely. when we're allowed to have people in our home again. Your house is going to be overflowing. <laughs> yeah, but we want to have a house that people who come in are impacted by the presence of God and mm. that starts with us. Yeah, definitely. Well, Bridie, I actually feel like you and I could probably sit here and chat Totally. All things God yeah. for days and days and days. And I just want to thank you. And I just want to encourage you for your honesty and your openness today. I think, you know, we need to get real and we need to talk about these things. Like I, I love the idea of talking to people about how we invite the Holy Spirit mm. into our homes, into our lives as a really practical, um, as, as practical steps. And you've been able to do that today. And I think many women that are watching will be encouraged. And, you know, I think more than anything, just knowing that this is hard, but we have God with us totally. and we can 100% invite the Holy Spirit to help us and we can live our lives mirroring him mm-hmm. and being more like 
Christ. Yeah, and coming out of this better people. Absolutely. So I just want to thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's been good. And I think we will definitely hear from you again. And it's great having you part of the One Hope community. So good. And I just want to, yeah, say God bless you and your husband and your beautiful family. And we look forward to chatting soon. It's my pleasure. (laughs) 